To Da Da in Memoriam is a short story by Paul Marshall published in 1985. The memory piece is a first-person narration about the first meeting and the memory of the incredible grandmother Da Da. The story is about how the modern automated world of science and skyscrapers takes over the old rural world of idyllic nature and pastoral innocence. The narrator's mother returns to Barbados from America after 15 years along with her two daughters. The nine years old narrator and her indescribably old grandmother daily take walks along the sugar canes where the grandmother introduces her granddaughter to the rural farmland and the granddaughter introduces the former to the technological advancements of New York. Right from the first meeting between the two, a kind of unspoken battle of the wits takes place take that foreshadows the approaching verbal battle of cultural values. The narrator notes that Dada had tilted my sister's face toward the light but oddly enough she did not touch me and peered hard at me. The old lady seems to have seen something disturbing even threatening in the young narrator for she quickly drew back shield her eyes with her hand and her laugh was cracked thin. Apprehensive. The nine years old girl with this fierce look seems to have won the encounter as the Dada had recognized my small strength and called her soul and took my hand. Dada's voicing of her concern regarding the child being one of those New York terrors foreshadows their later verbal challenges of one-upping the other regarding cultural differences. The morbid physical description of Dada juxtaposes with her lively and firm personality. At first glance, the narrator noted how Dada had drowned in the shadow of her felt hat and had a face that was as stark and fleshless as a death mask. The maggots might have already done their work with ruined skin and collapsed breasts, but her eyes betrayed a child's curiosity about the world. For the young narrator, Dada had appeared to contain them both the sense of a past and the bustling present under the weight of her eighty-odd years. The narrator paints contradictory imagery of the Dada and the environment throughout the memory piece. The clogged streets of Bridgetown with their cars and open-sided buses, bicycles, and donkey carts are contrasted with the high sugarcane fields, chestnut trees, big banana plants, and a variety of ripened fruits that the painted the images of pastoral peace and farmland greenery. This contrast is further highlighted by the gulf between the traditional rural Caribbean and the modern urban American environment. One is spread with pastoral greenery while the other is a towering world of steel and concrete and machines. While Dada stooping under the weight of her pride tries to convince the granddaughter of the natural beauty of her land that she knows the Americans don't have anything this nice. But she is both astounded and amazed by the foreign dances and songs and mention of New York snowfalls which would submerge Dada's sugar canes under tons of snow. After being unable to comprehend how the huge monolithic shape of the Empire State Building is taller than Bissex Hill and obstructing her vision. All the fight went out of her as trembling with rage Dada accepts her surrender of the onslaught and win of the modern world. Dada's acceptance comes at the price of her physical frailty and mental downward spiral from the small stubborn light in her eyes began to fail and walking slowly, her steps groping and uncertain as if she were suddenly no longer sure of her way. Violence is present in the narrative. Be it the Dada's physical description bordering on the macabre or the description of the canes clashing like swords and having to squeeze out all the little life in them to make sugar. The Barbadian gully was an area darker and almost impenetrable. The young narrator felt it to be a place dense and damp and gloomy and tremulous. It was a violent place, the tangled foliage fighting the branches of the trees locked in what seemed an immemorial struggle. Yet once gained the contradictory narrative asserts itself as despite the violence it was pleasant almost peaceful in the gully and the earth smelled like spring. Nonetheless the violence of machines and scientific advancements overtakes the world of nature and simple living. After the National Strike of Barbados The imposing colonial English aircraft hovers over the farmland forcefully flattening the young canes and sadistically shaking the ripened mangoes from the trees in Dada's orchard. The narrator is forever impacted by her meeting with Dada as she states she died and I live to this day even within the shadow of her death. The narrator continued her grandmother's views and love of nature through her art as she painted seas of sugar cane and huge swirling Van Gogh suns and palm trees striding like brightly plumed Tutsi. Warriors Across a Tropical Landscape
but the decisive overtake of modernity snakes itself into the narrator's life with the thunderous tread of the machines downstairs jared the floor beneath my easel mocking my efforts.